Now, the rest of the story. Well, I'll take 22. Oh, for those of you that don't make videos that are on here purely just to just to watch. Uh, when you make videos, sometimes you struggle to finish one, or struggle, struggle to really get through one. And my first planting, actual planting video has been a struggle. I'm not really sure why, but it seems like I just don't know how to carry a conversation. This is day four. Yep, we've been going for the last four days. I think that's probably one of the frustrating things about it. I mean, it's not like we're late at all. We're actually early to right on time anymore because it's the 26th of uh, Monday, the 26th of April. And this is day four of planting soybeans. Started with beans first because, you know, planting conditions and gives the ground a little bit more time to get better for, for corn. Now, when I say better, I mean, you know, warmer. A lot of talk about dry, 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 oh my gosh. Um, grain prices are really starting to reflect that. Um, corn was up. Limit up this morning for old crop. Soybeans, I guess I didn't look at soybeans too close. New crop. What's really getting my attention is the fact that these prices are jumping like they are in peak planting season in the Midwest. And we're seeing 20 cent moves. I think that's what new crop closed at for December. Uh, new crop corn was up 20 cents. Beans were up, well, 11 cents. The last time I looked at them. So I have targets in and everything else like that. I've given up on trying to hit the top of the market because that's a guaranteed way to go broke. Um, I actually, I stair step it. You know, I put targets in at different uh, different levels. And I have the majority, the lion's share of my projected production actually targeted. And I have a portion of it already, already priced, at least, you know, as far as futures. Basis isn't set yet, because I'm still thinking basis might get interesting this fall. Um, as far as how high I think it'll go, I'm not willing to say. Um, I still think it's capable of going higher than what it's currently at. But we didn't tune in, or you guys didn't tune in to talk about prices. You tuned in to, to watch me plan. Well, one of the reasons why this video has been such a challenge is because the first six or seven times that I tried to film it last night on day three was I actually had this magnet mount on this metal beam divider for the windows. Um, and the problem with doing that is the magnet was fine, but this wire here for my microphone which I've done enough of these videos now that I know better than to try to do these without the microphone. Because I kept catching the wire and the steering wheel spinner. And after like, well, the last time that I did it, um, I caught it hard enough and it ripped the whole thing down and the camera started making some funky looking colors in the front screen here. So I gave it up. This is the same camera from last night, so I guess if the audio or the, the video is kind of messed up, at least I know I know why. Um, first day starting planting was rough. Uh, the reason for that, if you watch how farms work, if you guys really want more context as far as the things I'm referencing, I mean, you almost have to go back and look at how farms work to really know what I'm talking about, because Ryan has the video of me addressing it. Well, fixing it. Um, a plastic bearing back that holds the tensioner for one of the roller chains and the drive mechanism back here on the planter broke. It was plastic, it cracked. 
I think it dried out. I mean, because it's been there for basically ever. It was the original green paint. Um, I'm, just, I'm guessing that it, it just dried out, but I don't think that was the culprit. Um, $6 bearing. Ran up to the local parts dealer because the parts guy is my buddy. And got there like an hour, not I don't know, it was an hour before it closed. Doesn't really matter, does it? Um, came back home put the new part in, finished getting the planter set, checking, making every, sure everything was going to work. Um, fine, good, great, dandy. Ran out to my brother's place because the seed that was in the planter uh, wasn't the seed that I wanted to plant at Rockville. Uh, the stuff that I wanted to plant at Rockville was in one of those giant bags, right? But the problem is I had to empty one of those uh, pro boxes, those plastic boxes, um, so I can empty the bag into it. If you guys watch, once again, my brother's channel, you'll have more of an understanding of what I'm really referencing here. Um, ran out to my brother's place by myself because the planter was working. Great! Uh, folded it out, spun around, got lined up with the strip I wanted to go plant on, dropped it in the ground. I don't think I made it 10 feet, and this thing started throwing a hissy fit. Look back. The roller chain was wrapped up around the tensioner again. Well, now what am I going to do? Um, the first indicator, the flag that I really should have should have thought ahead on, was it was a six dollar bearing, and the dealership had three of them on hand. That should have been my first warning. Um, I didn't pick any extras up. I should have brought the rest of them home, you know, just because. I mean, $6 isn't going to break the bank. At least, if anything, throw them in the parts bin until after planting and take them back if I had to. Um, so what I end up doing is because that new bearing, by design, you can flip it 180 degrees. Okay. Well, it was cracked just on the one side. So what we did, I'm not sure if Ryan filmed it, uh, flipped it back around so all of the tension the torque from the, the tensioner actually was pulling on the upper side so here's the the shaft here is the bearing um, it was cracked I had it flipped so the crack was on the bottom it was cracked out like that so this was busted and this was still good yeah make sure everything's still working um, so when we put that back on that shaft actually pulled down onto the broken part of that bearing it's a plastic POS but we're just gonna call it a plastic bearing um, it actually pushed back onto where it was broken and the non-broken part is is actually running true so it's actually straight even though it's busted and looking at the roller chain and everything back there you wouldn't really be able to tell that 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 bearing is busted. Did I fix it or replace it out with a new part? It's Monday, right? Um, the new parts are actually halfway home because my buddy bought them. Bro yeah. My friend Ryan. There's my brother Ryan and there's my friend Ryan. For those of you that don't, because I'm trying to cover about 30 miles in 10 minutes here. Um, my best friend Ryan and then there's my brother Ryan. Well, my, my friend Ryan works at the local dealership. He's the parts guy. Well, he lives halfway between the dealership and home. So he brings parts home for me. So the new parts are actually sitting in his window cell at his house. But here's the thing, I've been planting with the busted bearing. It, it kind of falls into the category of if it, if it works, don't fix it. Because I still don't know why it, it jumped the chain back there, jumped the pulley. I have no idea. I, I do not. Um, Ryan said he rode what five acres worth of planting and it hasn't acted up it hasn't acted up since I've adjusted the population about a half dozen times now it's working am I gonna change it when we go to corn yeah but the thing is I haven't really been away from the farm since we started planting and there's not much point in running up and getting a plastic bearing if I don't need it I mean, I'll eventually need it of course 
Um, for those that are probably asking, I'm not sure how much you guys are really seeing, but the two things we're going to address quick. Um, the monitor is moved. That's why I, I had problems with where I was going to put the camera. I'm using two separate camera mounts just so I can film this. So I'm sure you guys that appreciate what I do. Just so I can sit and talk to you guys. I already, I already know you appreciate it. Um, oh, that doesn't help them under the weather. I don't feel good. I got something from Marlena. Oh, her cold or late late in the season cold or what but, um, the monitor moving it up here where I lost is the ability to set the camera up but that's that's really not that big of a deal because with this being right more in my face all the controls so I can do the row shutoffs the manual shutoffs and the planner is so much more convenient because I'm not reaching ahead trying to look over my shoulder you know trying to watch which row I need to be shutting off this right here I can have my hand up on the controller I'm sitting back in my in my seat comfortable as I can get spin around go yep yep probably shouldn't have planted that but we're gonna let it go anyway and you know hammer down so the monitor this was this was a big plus I'm, I'm very happy we did this and you know the bot the, the cab is about as as clean as I can really get it. I mean, you gotta run wires. It's just one of the demons you gotta deal with when you're, when you're dealing with monitors. Um, secondly, because we address it all the time, why am I using the markers? Gosh, I can't, why, why do I bother using the markers? Okay, now if I sound kind of whiny, that's just because that's the way people come across when they complain about using the markers. I'm using, Terrastar, RTK. I'm using the guidance. I mean, do I miss the days where I can manually do this? I can manually plant this if I want, but I like straight rows. And let's face it, letting the computer, computer, computer do it. Um, I actually should take this monitor, this egg leader monitor, to some gaming expert and have him like soup this bad boy up. Um, but having the the GPS and the monitor plant. I prefer it for spraying, which we don't do our own spraying yet. Oh, uh, who left that there? That was a coyote or a dog. A coyote or dog or something dug a hole there. Um, for spraying, cultivating, um, combining, even for combining soybeans, when you can basically go across the field however you want, it's nice being able to drive in straight rows. Didn't really appreciate that that much when I was a kid. Because, you know, when you're younger, you just want to drive, 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 drive. Well, the reason I use the markers is because it keeps this, which I know you guys, I don't know if you can see the monitor out the side of the screen, but the monitor, it keeps this thing honest. Um, the reason I say that is because nothing against the, the technology, but nothing is perfect. All right? I've lost guidance. Um, I've had the computer um, not want to pick up the line right away. So the big reason why I do the marker arms is because of what I'm doing right now. I'm on the headland. Oops. See, talking and messing stuff up. I'm gonna pick that up. It slowed me down because I lost my train of thought. And then we're gonna turn. And, oh, look at that. There's a marker arm, marker line. So we're gonna line that up off the front of the hood. Look over here, yep. See, ooh, didn't kick on. Makes my point that much better. I'm gonna drop it down, and uh, normally when I'm not talking to myself, this is a lot more flawless. And hammer down. And this is easy planting. I like the the nice straight back and forth fields, the, the solid fields. Um, didn't really realize how miserable it was planting contours growing up until you get into some of the bigger fields where you're allowed to just plant them. And you still follow contours and all that stuff where it matters, but um, like the strips at home and, and my place and my brother's place, 
we could plant those in solid chunks, it'd be nice, but then at the same time, we still need the, the rotation for the crops. And this isn't a, a huge field, this is only 20 acres. We're almost done though, we're at 17 right now, and well, as you can see, we're actually getting the lower end of the field. Planting anywhere from 120 to 160,000 seeds per acre. Uh, really varies from farm to farm. Had a minor panic attack earlier because I have more soybean seed than what I should have left in theory. Um, I messed up in my notes. I mean, looking back, I remember it now because I actually have it written down, but I have an extra tote, a bag of, of seed then what I have acres left to plant, which is about 25 acres, give or take, depending on the population I'm gonna run. Um, look back at my notes and sure enough, um, the acres down at my place, I have a messed up. I have figured for the other set of strips on my place and it, it threw me off so we have a bag of seed we can at least send back because we haven't touched it and then um, well be switching the corn here tomorrow so no problems there I'm not putting any liquid fertilizer down on the soybeans I thought about it I'm not going to uh, just because I'm not really set up for it because I have to mix a bunch of like 50 50 mix of water and uh, the, fer the liquid fertilizer that I currently have on the farm, I'm just not going to mess with it. I um, really like want to, I really just want to get this done because if we have any rain come Wednesday, all the soybeans are in the ground and they'll benefit from it. Because that is what everybody is worried about right now is you're hearing everybody say that the ground is getting too dry, conditions are getting dry, panic, panic, panic. Well. You're hearing that out west that they're dry. Uh, as far as us, I'm planting in the moisture. Uh, it's, I actually dropped the, the depth down on the soybeans. Normally I plant at an inch and a half. I'm planting them at an inch and three quarters. Not a huge difference, but by doing that, I'm knowing um, more consistently across the field that I am planting in the moisture. Uh, because some of the ground on the home farm we've worked to the point where yeah it was drier on on the top and we're going through and harrowing this so the next argument is you're burying it you're going to bury it we're burying it with dry soil the biggest threat that i have with emergence because i don't want the soybeans to get crusted over or anything like that my biggest concern is we get a hard pounding rain and then it gets really, really hot out and creates a layer of concrete over top of this seed before it can get out of the ground and we'll have emergence issues. It's a threat we deal with every single year. I absolutely hate it and it's just one of those factors that you have to be aware of as you work so, we're on 18 minutes this video is supposed to be coming out tomorrow night so hopefully it's not too long that i can actually get it uploaded um, with that thanks for watching thanks for tuning in if i was feeling better i'd feel more lively i have about 12 different topics i could let like sit and talk about i don't know if you guys want me to set the camera up and do a an over a voiceover video on the planner but let's face it um, there's already how many uh, action e-videos like that out there on the internet. Plus my brother is doing the videos as well. So to be honest, it feels like I'm converting more to oops, messed up. Converting more to the just sitting and talking while I'm working videos. These are the videos I actually prefer to do. Um, they're on point. They're as there is things are happening because when I do the voiceovers, it's not like I'm not going to do voiceovers at all um, this year at all. But um, when I do those, it's usually like 11 o'clock at night and I just want to go to sleep. And because I have a little girl, um, I do try to spend time with her. 
so I don't get to just go at home and sit in the office anymore. Hey, my phone's ringing. So with that, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you guys like listening to this uh, what, poor broke farmer. Um, farming. Sounds fair. So until next time, take care, take it easy, keep in touch. I appreciate your guys' support.